What is up, bros? Beyond here. Today's video is all about premium ships in World of Warships because since 2018 is coming to a close, it's time to make that top five most overpowered premium ships in World of Warships video. Now, since World of Warships is constantly adding new ships into the game as well as balancing current ones that are already in the game, it's bound to change the top five from last year. But will some of the kings from last year's make it to the top five? Will a newcomer take over the reign? And will your favorite premium ship take over? the top spot as most overpowered premium in World of Warships. As well as last year, people brought up the comments of why have ships be uh, on the top five list that aren't attainable anymore. That's a fantastic point. So in this video, we'll do a top five attainable and top five unattainable ships. Lots of ships to get over, so let's make this video not be too long. And let's see if you guys agree with my top five list for most overpowered ships in World of Warships. Now, before we dive into the list itself, I want to tell you some quick criteria when I was making this list. We're not going to add any of the premium aircraft carriers. That includes the Saipan, the Kaga, the Enterprise, and the Graf Zeppelin, because this was recorded pre-8.0, which is when the CV rework has come. So most likely when you're watching this, the rework has happened, so those might not even be in the game anymore, as well as arsenal ships like the Steel. Uh, ships like the Flint, the USS Black, Stalingrad, Borgonia, plus whatever ships are now available um, in the future. I'm not going to add these ships because they are so exclusive when it comes to the uh, amount of players, as well as ships like the Missouri and the Kronstadt that are were available for free XP, um, as well as the Musashi in 8.0. Those are both taken out of the game. So I will not be including those on the attainable list. Those will be all, at least the free XP and the coal, like the Missouri Masashi and Kronset, those will be on the unattainable list. You still will be able to get them in the future in super containers and Christmas containers, but I will be considering those unattainable. So depending on when you're watching that, that'll make sense, but we're not adding the CVs and also the 8.0 ships. They will not be considered on that list as well as steel ships. At number five, we have to give it to the Tier A IGN Cruiser, the Otago, one of the oldest premiums in the entire game. And this has really stood the test of time as being one of the best premium cruisers tier for tier in the entirety of the game. It's been around for so long and it still has been so good. The first Tier 8 cruiser to have a heal and now one of select few that still does and still is just so good at what it does, that really stealthy IJN cruiser. And I mean, there's even three versions of this ship with the now the uh, black version as well as the ARP to cow if you're able to get that during the event. But the, the Otago has just stood the test of time at just being both uh, amazingly stealthy, very deadly, and as well as just being a fantastic credit earner. With the Tier 8 IGN Cruiser, you get a mix, a perfect storm of just kind of everything with it just really outperforming um, its counterpart, the Mogami at Tier 8. With having that heal ability, as well as just that incredibly low detection of 9.1, those IGN 203s absolutely slam against whatever it hits and can really just be a, a hassle to deal with. Really the perfect example of the, Z the Tier 10 Zhao within a Tier 8 body. And the, uh, really, I think the Otago, I was thinking about maybe taking it off the list. There are some other really, really good premiums that are have come into the game, especially within this last year. But still, the Otago is still really worth the money. It, 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 it just, it plays so well even after all this time all these new cruisers all these new play styles and it's still something you can buy every day in this ship in multiple versions now so um the otago has to stay number five for me i don't think this ship will really ever fall off this top five list and it just seems crazy to do a top five without having this tried and true og premium starting us off at fifth most overpowered premium ship in the game at number four, we have the tier six destroyer, the Shinonome. Now, the best part about this ship is you can still get this ship for free by completing the campaign to get it. Um, that's just one you can go over in your campaigns and finish it up. And there you go. You have one of these insanely strong destroyers. Now, at tier six, this is extremely competitive with its 6.1 kilometer detection, as well as its recent buffs to its guns that were already really good. Um, it's got a buff to it both at alpha damage and fire chance. So at 6.1 uh, kilometers, it's not only a better gunboat than its counterpart, the Fubuki. It's just straight up just almost better in general in almost every way. It doesn't have the 10 kilometer uh, torps that you tend to want with the IGN uh, destroyers, but it does have those better guns. So it's that IGN DD that you would love to have because it has good torps as well as being able to defend itself. So not only slaying out with both guns and torps, well, 
with just guns you can slay out with torps as well and then still be super stealthy to get back away and be a nasty nasty torp boat with one of the recent seasons of rank sprint um, this thing really shined right after its buff to its guns and showed how much of a king of this tier this could really really be now i think there's another dd at this tier the that is maybe just a tad better but the shinonome if you love that ign dd placed out this thing is for you go finish that campaign get it done and then you'll have one of the strongest destroyers at this tier if not the strongest again all these are going to depend on a little bit of your play style but the shinonome is a fantastic one and i think jumps up into the top five for sure best part is you can still get it for free at number three you have a tried and true destroyer in the low gang now if you ever played any of the tier eight seasons of rank battles you have gone against the ship and it's an absolute monster now 1v1 it basically looks like a benson or a henson yang from the pan asian line and both of those destroyers will beat them kind of 1v1 with guns but the thing that this has and literally nothing else that this tier really does is it's nasty offensive sonar so the thing that makes this ship so strong and so overpowered in my opinion which i'm still surprised it still has this is 5.5 kilometer detection uh or sonar that lets you just be an offensive beast now 5.8 kilometer detection 5.5 kilometer sonar you could technically outspot some ships like the asashio kigero uh, harakaze which have a 5.4 de detection you could actually spot them with their sonar before they're even detected it gives you a 1.1 kilometer buffer obviously it's not a lot but the thing about this ship and the way you can be so deadly in this ship is using your smokes offensively and using this sonar which is basically just the same thing as a long duration short distance radar um the, getting into smoke and getting that kill on a destroyer that has no way of defending itself against you a long duration sonar with an extremely long range since it was basically um normalized with the sonar change over time the low yang basically got this insane buff uh, when it came to it so it, it's not going to win all the fights 1v1 gun wise but if you aren't if you're trying to just win straight up with the low yang you're not exactly playing it right so a bit more of a harder ship to play in my opinion of really using this effectively but when done correctly this ship is completely overpowered in my opinion because of how nasty that sonar could be and you can really kind of see a good low yang almost dance around other destroyers and using his smoke offensively using that sonar and really just getting that early kill i love playing this i love playing the ship in ranked i love playing it in randoms because that unexpected dd that doesn't know you have the sonar cooldown or off of cooldown and can use that they're basically just sitting they're sitting ducks right there and it's easy kills go in get your kill and then you're off and you're still a very very good boat in general good hybrid without even needing to use it so low yang is a ship i think that will until something comes up with another ship just like it this is a fantastic one now we have seen some other ships like the lightning and the cossack that have kind of gotten extremely high praises even from me at this tier but that sonar and that range and duration really puts it kind of head and shoulders still above the competition and i think if i saw a rank a tier eight rank i would still use the lilian because of that offensive sonar at number two we have the standout julio cesar now this was another ship that was absolutely highlighted for being super super strong in one of the latest rank sprints the tier five version and it is just insane this ship is so good and they were handing it out for free if you didn't even play um, if you had gone a while without even playing world of warships so people were getting it for free it's a tier five price tag so it's relatively cheap compared to everything else and this thing just absolutely slaughters it doesn't matter if it's bottom tiered or high or or top tiered if you're top tiered in this it's gg easy if you're bottom tiered you can up tier extremely well it's basically a tier six strength ship tier six and some change probably and you're in a tier five body a tier five matchmaking it's so head and shoulders above everything else at this tier its armor is absolutely ridiculous now obviously it always gets compared to the tier seven ships like the nagato and the colorado how they really don't care about anything they kind of just lol pen but against tier fives it's tier five counterparts and even a lot of the tier six ships it doesn't care with a low detection maneuverability uh every extremely accurate guns laser accuracy guns this thing does not care it's super super strong if you love low tier play and you want to get yourself an extremely overpowered ship get yourself the caesar uh you'll just you'll see insane results with this ship there's really nothing bad about this ship i mean maybe you can make fun of its aa rating but nothing that 
tier five besides the Texas and maybe some AA Koenigs or something have a very high AA rating. The Caesar is just fantastic. So much fun to play. And really was highlighted about being super, super, super strong in the in one of the latest ranked sprint uh, matches or the seasons. So if you haven't gotten this, definitely worth picking it up. If you have some maybe some doubloons or something like that laying around, it's in the tech tree. Or even if you got a couple extra bucks, it's definitely worth it. You'll get your fun out of it. So Caesar salad, as I call it, uh, number two spot for most overpowered chip. I don't think anybody's too surprised about this being so high up on the list. Certainly last but not least, it's my favorite ship on the entire list and it is the T61 and in my opinion the most overpowered ship right now tier for tier in the entire game of World of Warships and it's the tier 6 destroyer. Another destroyer that really got its highlight in the latest rank sprint um, where a lot of these ships have really kind of shined and it just shows how strong the ship can actually be. Now this is the high high tier german destroyer play in low tier bodies and low tier matchmaking and the t61 just absolutely obliterates nearly all destroyers now as i talked about with the shinonome the shinonome is fantastic so these are totally different play styles but both extremely good destroyers so all of these ships obviously can be interchangeable depending on who the play style is but the t61 in my opinion just is insanely strong Good health pool for tier 6, low detection for what kind of guns it brings, 6.1 kilometer detection, and it has that extremely fast torp reload um, with right around a minute. It's the perfect kind of mix as well as having German Hydro, so not only offensive but defensive on that Hydro, uh, avoiding all the torps as well as pushing smoke and having that advantage on other DDs. And then if you need to, you can throw out those 128 millimeter shells and sit all the heck out of cruisers. This is really a perfect mix of DD that is kind of just been released. When I did a review on this ship, I couldn't stop smiling. I love this ship. I love the play style that this ship brings and really just enjoy this ship to play and really enjoy um, bringing it out into randoms. Again, another ship that doesn't really matter what kind of matchmaking you have. If you're top tier, you're going to absolutely smash. If you're bottom tier, you can actually compete very well. 6.1 kilometer detection, even against tier eights, really isn't that bad. Throw some radio location on there, and you're right into the fight. With almost 17,000 HP, it's very competitive, even at bottom tier, as well as having that sonar. You can pick on high tier destroyers if you set it up correctly. But really, 8 kilometer torps, really fast reload, good speed on those, low detection. You can get things done in this ship no matter what game you're in and really enjoy doing it. T61 for me, tier for tier, in my opinion, the most overpowered premium in the game and um, one of my favorite destroyers to play in all of this list. So as I said earlier, we're dividing this video into two top five lists, and this top five is going to be ships that are really no longer available. Now what I mean by that is this video was recorded before 8.0, and some of the ships will be taken away from their free XP or coal, so no longer on those types of loot tables, as well as we will not be talking about any CV still since the CV rework is coming, as well as steel ships will still no longer be on this list due to their exclusivity behind the steel resource. Um, this one has some of the most popular premium ships and it would just be kind of a crime for me to do a top five most overpowered without these ships being on some kind of list at number five it would be a crime for me to talk about overpowered premiums without showing off the kamikaze R. now with the kamikaze R, I am going to include the fujin as well as the kamikaze the tier five ign premium destroyers and if you've ever played this game with low to mid tier battleships you never want to see these on the red team because they're just the perfect low tier destroyers extremely low detection very fast firing torps the torps themselves are really really fast at 68 knots and with the right kind of captain skill they're launching two torps every 42 seconds that are just going to hit with that igm strength so the perfect mix of low tier uh fast firing torps actually decent guns to be other destroyers and just being able since they are premiums to put high level captains into them this is the perfect storm of just picking on relatively new players with low players too you have a lot of straight line sailing battleships and when it comes to straight line sailing battleships igen destroyers make them go boom um one of the things that makes these ships so strong is because the tech tree counterpart of these is the minikaze now the minikaze was nerfed a while ago but the premium ships weren't touched along the way one of the best part about this too is the kamikaze if you were playing a long time ago you could have got it for free through a community event but really there's no other way to get these ships outside of these super containers as well as the santa crates so if you can get one on your get one of your hand 
at number four, we can't make a list without some Russian bias. Then is the tier four premium battleship, the Imperator Nikolai. If you got one of these, you have a gem on your hands because this ship has kind of just gotten stronger over time. And it's kind of scary to think about that with it already being one of the strongest battleships in the game for its tier. Um, its weaknesses, which were CVs and I guess higher tier battleships, kind of like everything, have kind of been nullified with its protective matchmaking as well as CVs no longer being able to manual drop. Its weaknesses, which is complete lack of AA, have kind of just gotten thrown away, and so you just get to be this extremely overpowered battleship in wonderful uh, matchmaking all the time. Um, with 12 guns going out, you are the bane of cruisers, and you just don't want to see red the red team have any of these because you know you're at a disadvantage with any other tier 4 battleship. Some of the battleships at the tier have gotten buffs along the way, but nothing can keep up with the Imperator Nikolai. And with laser accuracy for its guns, although having a pretty long reload, it doesn't really matter if you're slapping battleships for half their or full, or their full life every salvo. Um, absolutely strong armor. You can't pen it if you if it the driver knows what it's doing and just can absolutely roll over puggies in normal sad tech tree tier four battleships. Imperator Nikolai has to be on this list and really the only way of getting them is still through uh, certain containers. So without really a way to get it, we got to have it on the unattainable list. But if you have it, you know you have a gem and you know you enjoy seal clubbing with this every once in a while. At number three, we have to throw on the Big Daddy Mo. Now, this is a ship that was originally for free XP, 750,000 free XP, but is no longer available through those means, and again, only available through certain containers. So, good luck getting these, but the main reason about this being so completely overpowered is it's it's a good battleship overall it's wonderful it's kind of just like the tier 9 iowa but it still to this day is the only battleship with radar so that also sets it apart but one of the most overpowered ships and even in my opinion the thing that makes this so overpowered isn't really even the radar yeah that's some icing on the cake like hey i have this ace in my sleeve i can be aggressive and spot destroyers and I'm literally the only battleship that can do that at this range, since other battleships have sonar, is its credit earnings. Not only can you pop radar and ruin Destroyer's day and help your team get that victory and really kind of just be wonderful, the thing about the Missouri is that it has it's the only ship in the game that has its bonus credit multiplier. And Wargaming has even said that that was basically a mistake to add to the ship. And you'll probably never see that in a ship again. So if you got the Missouri, hell yeah, you're one of the few people that have this thing. You can go out with basically no flags and make like a million credits. No big deal. Or you can stack it up and just make two, three million in a game, depending on how good your game is and how many flags you have on it, as well as camos and whatnot. The best, easily the best. People ask me, what's the best credit earner in this game? And it has to be the Missouri. So not only are you the lone battleship in the entire game that has radar, I wouldn't even say that's the overpowered part of the ship. I would say it's the pure credit earnings. With it being a tier nine, you're doing lots of damage, which helps with the credits, as well as having a, being a premium ship, you have a very low repair cost. So kind of this perfect storm of just the perfect credit earning machine and with a night of playing this ship you could be able to afford a tier 10 ship no problem missouri still one of the favorite tier 9 battleships in the game uh, if you have it you know you love playing it because it absolutely slams and is still it has to be on this list it's just so hard to get these days only having the rng gods shine down upon you and giving you the right container with this ship being in it at number two, it shouldn't be that big of a surprise, is the Mikhail Kutuzov. It is the tier 8 Russian cruiser that, since the day it's been born and put into this game, has caused the havoc and angry game chat of battleships around the world. With an insanely high fire chance, as well as an insanely fast reload, as well as just, you know, being a smoke cruiser, this thing is perfect, as well as CVs hating this as well, because if you spec it out right, it has a crazy high AA rating. Really just this perfect mix to have as a cruiser and being in a division, or just kind of being that lone wolf since you have the cruiser uh, with smoke and you can just kind of farm out an entire team. Now, this thing went through a pseudo kind of scare when it came to the AFT change, which gave it the range. But Wargaming said, hey, don't worry, premium users, we're going to extend your range to 19.1 so AFT doesn't affect you. So it got a pseudo buff there to an extremely long range at 19.1. 
and then it went through another scare of the smoke when firing or smoke firing penalty which gave it a 7.7 .7 kilometer detection range when firing in smoke now if you've ever played a off you're really not getting that close to the battle anyway you're kind of sticking near that 15 kilometer range or so and just raining fire down from from the heavens and just farming your six digit damage games over and over and over and over there's not really that i mean this has to be one of the easiest ships to farm tons of damage in and just if you get into the right situation there's nothing teams can really do it's not like a cv can push in and just bomb you one you're in smoke and two you have a high a rating with an a consumable or you know i guess teams are getting better and battleships are getting better at shooting into smoke but anybody with the brain is going to consistently move and good luck hitting the ship at a decent range in smoke as it's burning you down to the ground those are kind of the things that this ship does really really well lots and lots of fire so kudos off still one of the strongest ships i don't really play it that much but i did to get some game footage then i just forgot kind of how strong the ship was and really there's so many situations where the enemy you're fighting against can't really do anything against you because what they're on fire so number two it's got to be the kudos off if you have it love it enjoy it um, but just don't be on the red team when i'm playing my battleship please that's all i beg of you certainly last but not least the last ship of this video has to go to the one tier 7 uk cruiser the belfast this ship alone made for uh i can't even an unaccountable amount of rage for one rank season when it was tier 7 if you ask anybody that played in that season they don't want tier 7 again just because of one ship there's not really the same kind of hatred for one ship or love depending on if you were playing it uh for one ship like the belfast this thing has become a legend and you don't really see it played too much anymore but the people that have it know how good this ship is and the reason why because it was the real first it's the first and only ship that has smoke and it has radar so you have two of the strongest consumables in the entire game on the same ship and then not only is it do you have the two most overpowered consumables the two best consumables in this game you also have the ability to have a very high alpha damage with inertia fuse a very fast reload a very f high fire chance and a very low detection this ship honestly has no weakness although i guess the only weakness it has is maybe against cvs but still a decent aa rating and if you want to you can spec it up a little bit and you'll be still shredding some planes if they're trying to attack you but again you have smoke most cvs are going to have a tough time hitting you with too many torps and if you can break away and get away from the front lines you can get near your team i guess who you have one weakness and that's potentially planes other than that it this is another ship that does not matter if it's bottom tier if it's going against sixes yeah easy peasy if it's going against nines who cares easy peasy low detection high fire chance decent range smoke and radar what else could you want in a cruiser um at that that's just this premium way and, and on top of that super easy to farm damage in and just a blast to play um it's crazy that this <laughs> this ship was really kind of ever released and probably one of the most um notorious premiums that's ever been released in this game and it's the one that people wish they had as well as the people that have it know they have it and love that they have it so the tier 7 belfast is fantastic but boy is it overpowered when it comes to this game and has to be on the list so let me know in the comments below what you guys think of these lists now i wanted to split it up because that's what people talked about last year it wasn't kind of fair um the unattainable list is kind of the same as what last year's list was but i wanted to split it up because so many of these ships are attainable and unattainable and so I didn't think it was quite fair to do a top five list and just have it kind of be the same ships as well as ships that saying, hey, you can't get these ships anymore. It seems like kind of a waste of time. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think of both of these top five lists. Were any of your favorite ships on either of these lists? And let me know in the comments below if you enjoy any of the ships that I missed on either of these lists. 2018 was a good year for premium ships. Lots of new variety, lots of new ships that have kind of their own little niche play style, which I love to see. So grats to Wargaming doing that. And I'm excited to see what 2019 holds for new premium ships, what they might bring. Will next year's ships be a new top five? Will I have to see? Will any of the new or any of the old ships that are not attainable 
go back on for sale. We'll only have to see. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me. Hope you guys had a wonderful 2018. Hope you guys are enjoying the ships either on this list or off these lists. But that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.